Hi friends and welcome back to Moravian Airport. Well, we're here at Blue Demon Aviation today, thankfully inside because there are thunderstorms rolling through Melbourne today. But behind me, and in pieces you might not recognise her, that's actually Kilo Juliet November. And she's about to go through her 100 hourly inspection. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. So I'm here with Stephen again from Blue Demon Aviation. You'll recognise Stephen, we've flown together on the channel before. And the video that we produced about the propeller on Kilo Juliet November when we changed from the four to the three blade prop did really well and a lot of you were very interested in that kind of engineering and maintenance content. So that's why we are here, like I said earlier, down here at um, Blue Demon Aviation to do the 100 hourly on Kilo Juliet November. I say we, I'm not touching it this time because after last time with the prop, and also I don't want to wear that red jumpsuit either again because that <laughs> didn't really work. What are the kind of the main things on the aircraft that get covered in the 100 hourly? Um, almost almost the entire airplane will get covered in a 100 hourly inspection. Everything gets sort of broken up into its own categories. There's the way we do it, we go through engine, airframe, avionics all in their own separate sections. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, everything will get looked at in a hundred hourly. But if you break it down into the kind of the main components of the aircraft? Engine, um, you go wings are a separate category, the centre of the fuselage on its own is a separate category, and the landing gear is probably the four main ones we break it up into. Um, and then we get the avionics shop to come in and do the avionics side of it. But roughly how long How long would it take you from start to finish? Um, sort of working on probably three days type thing, if there's nothing wrong with it, if there's probably two guys working on it. Mm -hmm. um, if you start finding things and issues with the aeroplane then it, it blows out from there. But yeah, sort of two to three days is where yeah. we work on. And so where are we, where are we going to start today? Um, might start, start and have a look around the engine today. At the moment we've got the aeroplane completely apart. Yeah. So we'll go from there and just have a look at a couple of different interesting things inside the airplane. All right. Okay, so as we said, starting with the engine. So there's obviously a, a number of different things that go on in the engine, but we're going to have a look at a, a couple of the key things first of all. So what's one of the, what's one of the checks that you're doing um, now, Steve? So when the, when the airplane first comes in, the engine's normally warm. Um, We'll have a quick vigil over the engine, make sure there's no massive oil leaks or anything obvious like that. Um, but then it comes back to a few major checks that we do first. First one being a compression check, which we'll demonstrate here in a second. The second one being a boroscope inspection, which are both internal inspections of the cylinders. What we'll then do is we plug this gauge in here, which is just a differential pressure gauge, into the top of the cylinder. Put 80 psi of air, compressed air into the cylinder. And all we're doing is measuring the leak rate out of that cylinder. So out of this one we're losing 2 psi, which is a really good result. So we do this check for each of the six cylinders, uh, record them and then we keep them as a recorded trend but over the life of the aeroplane. Uh, make sure they're all running nice. Alright, so once you would have done that around all six cylinders, all obviously, six cylinders yep. Yep. then where would you go after that point? Our next check um, would be a boroscope inspection. Yeah, this is like, like surgery basically. Um, so what we're doing here is a boroscope inspection internally in the cylinder. Make sure the valves are seating right, um, that the burn pattern inside the cylinder is right. This one here is your exhaust valve. So we're just looking for it, it's hard to explain, but looking for a nice round concentric um, burn pattern on the exhaust. So the circle pattern on the screen. Yep. If that leads to one edge of the valve, that's suggesting that it's leaking leaking air, which we would have also picked up in the compression check. And then the second one we're looking for is the nice shiny surface on the sidewall of the cylinder. Right. If it goes to a very polished and mirror finish, that's what we call glazing the cylinder, right. which is caused by people either running the engine at idle for way too long or going to high power before it gets to temperature. So, so once we've done those first couple of major checks, um, we then go to the oil filter, which is sitting around here on the back, back of the engine underneath the aircon compressor. A little white cylinder sitting down the back in there. Um, if we're happy with that, we then refill the oil system after we've drained the old oil at the bottom. 
Um, but then going into your general servicing of the engine, would we'll then go through all your filter replacements. So you've got an air filter up the front here, and once you've done your filter changing, um, you'd go into a general inspection, make sure your engine controls are all making their correct travels. Magneto timing to the engine is correct. And then the exhaust system's down here as well. Do you do anything with that too? Um, the exhaust system, again, is a very close visual inspection. There's the two mufflers, one on this side, one on the other side. The one on the right-hand side of the engine is where we get your cabin heat from, um, which is this shroud here. This is your cabin heat going into there. So what we'll do is we'll pull the shroud off and have a look at the muffler, make sure there's no holes in the muffler. Again, this exhaust is running red hot, so we're making sure that there's no cracking in the metals and stuff like that. Nothing's bubbled in it or, or distorted. And then, of course, at the front here, and this has been not a not a point of contention, but certainly there's, there's Team 3 and Team 4 when it comes to Kilo Duty at November. Three blade is on here at the moment from the Outback trip that I did and some flying that Stephen's done the last couple of weeks. But you're changing it? We're changing it back over, we're going back to the four blade this time, so we'll leave it on there. Comment below if you're team four or team three. I do like the four, but the three's really grown on me. Is your team four? Okay, we'll see. But let us know down below. <laughs>
and then the rigging of the bow crank to the actual flight control and then everything's sitting there nicely, nothing's, nothing's come loose, nothing's been damaged at any point. It's all just sitting there nicely happy. The Cirrus, I don't know whether you know, some of you pilots out there who don't fly a Cirrus, to steer it, it's got a castering nose wheel, so you don't actually push left and right on the rudder pedals. That's, there's no connection between no. that and the nose wheel. So we steer by the differential braking. Differential brakes. With the wheel. So does that mean you need to pay particular attention to the brakes as well when you're doing the inspections? We, we always will pay close attention to the brakes no matter what aeroplane, but yes, coming back to the Cirrus, it is a little bit more critical because you have no directional control on the ground without them. We haven't jacked it up yet, but we will jack the aeroplane up every 100 hours. I'll get the aeroplane off the ground, pull the wheels completely off, have a good look at the landing gear leg and its attached, but then a really good, good look around the brakes. The brake disc here on the other side, um, and the brake calipers hidden around the back of the wheel. If they're getting close, we'll replace them, put new, new, new discs or new pads back into it to keep it going. There's a couple of tabs on the brakes as well, the, the white tabs as we call them in the yeah. pre-flight. Um, and that's a really important one to check in your pre-flights as well for the series is just make sure that the brakes haven't been excessively overused previously, they haven't overheated. Wet, but, wet. There's also a second temp, they call it Tully temp sticker. There's the one that the pilots can see through the inspection window, but there's also another one higher up on the caliper, which we see. See, that's the difference between uh, engineer and non-engineer is I call them the white tab thing on the wheel and you've got what is it tally temp stickers? Tally temp stickers. Yeah that sounds much better. <laughs>So the burning question then for me is, when can I have it back? Because I really want to go to Tasmania and up the east coast, I need to get back to Perth. Uh, well, where we're going, probably in about two days time. All right, you heard it here first. I'll hold him to that. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Appreciate Thank your time you. as always. Thanks, mate.